then so this is a video all about vibration and wear do you know what little side note while i was looking for stuff i found this i did this years ago and i haven't done the video for it yet so what this is is um this is oh for fuck's sake do you know what give me a second There we go. So what this is, is this is an injector body that I meticulously uh, took apart and then cross-sectioned and then meticulously cleaned and did a lot of work on. And this all comes apart, but you can see there, this is the injector, all of it. And you can see all the little tiny welds. You can see the nozzles in the end. It's all fucking tiny. The collar, the filter, the insert, everything. The plastic retaining ring, the screen, just the pintle, ev everything that's in there. And I did this, and I was like, oh, I'll do a video on this soon. That was like fucking four years ago. <laughs> Whoops. So you'll see that soon. <laughs> <laughs> fucking won't be soon. Be there fucking ten years. They've done studies, you know. Sixty percent of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Right, so it is an absolute madhouse. Um, I want to cut some of this while I'm talking. So um, I've got some old jeans. I'm going to cut them up into bits for rags. Um, yeah, so. Uh, wear, that's it, wear and vibration, right, so you might, you know, there's loads of information and everyone seems to do videos on, oh, I read this up in a magazine or I read this up in an article about vibration, right, about balance, um, primary and secondary balance and so on and so forth, no one ever actually talked why, right, no one ever actually talked why you'd want to do that. Um, so here I have the uh, SV, so this is the SV crank, this is only out because I'm about to do a video um, on the actual crank itself and, and, and all that goodness. But they go to great extent to balance these, right? you, you, it's a lot of design work goes into trying to sort out balance. And when we're looking at the R1, that's even fucking worse. And it's quite a hard subject to demonstrate in a simple way. But I'm working on it. Um, but let's just have a look at another one. That's the SV. This, if I can do this right. This is, I got this delivered. Um from DB uh, DB Repair that's where this came from um, I think this is the DB Repair one of course it is the fucking no one else will leave it in that state <laughs> this is the DB Repair crank and um, yeah again same same arrangement really it's a it's a v twin with a single crank pin and you can see that it has a balance but it has an offset balance this isn't just rolling right it goes this far but then it wants to fucking hell imagine that <laughs> it just rolls straight at me it wants to rock so it has a um center of mass that isn't in line with its centre of rotation, its centre of rotation being where the shaft is, um, but we are not, it, you know, if we try and tip it that way, it'll fall over obviously, but we are not balanced in that kind of direction. And you'll see all these bulk fittings and all these masses, and you'll see actually there's two there, three there, and uh, there's all these holes, right, you can see all these holes in the bottom that have been drilled. This is actually quite nasty. I don't like this crank, as in the way that it's balanced. It it looks like <coughs> they've been quite lazy, and um, 
then start to drill shitloads of holes out of it, but then also put extra weight in it. So it seems a bit um, haphazard by Ducati does this. It seems a bit like we'll work it out on the night. Um, oops. Uh, what's this one for? This is a 12.99 Panangali. Uh, it says Ducati there. Yeah, it just seems seems weird. I don't know if you, how well you can see that, but it's got a little Ducati emblem, and it says a 12.99 Panangali. Uh, yeah, don't like it. Don't like it. Um, this, on the other hand. It's mass produced, right? So they put a lot more work into getting this right. There are some holes in this, you know, that are again offset. And I could go on about primary and secondary. I could talk about moments of inertia. But the thing is, people like to just talk about, oh, you know, the rods and secondary and primary and all those things. The one thing they kind of completely miss, which is what we're going to go into, not today. Jesus, just fuck off. I don't know why I was down there, actually. What they failed to mention in all of this is this bit. This is um, when we talk about balance and stuff like that and masses and so on. This thing here, this flywheel jobby thing, this thing which is also fucking huge and heavy, also has something to do with all this rotational wobbly balancey stuff it's not so much balance is it is more rotational energy again a different video what i want to talk about today is why right why go to all this bullshit of this just having these weights full stop and the, this these holes and nah why go to all this effort anyway? Why does balance matter? The uh, Kawasaki Z900, uh, which is my current bike, um, has an extra balancer shaft. Just It's a straight four, but it has a little extra balancer shaft for what appears to be no reason. Right, The other bikes in that range, they don't have to share that engine, but the other bikes that are in that range don't have that balancer shaft. Why? Why does the H2R, staying with Kawasaki, have two? Why does it have two balancer shafts, little small little diddy things, in different locations? One right down low by the engine, like the Z900, but one fucking all the way up high in the sky. Why? And someone's going to say, oh, well, it's the supercharger. But the supercharger is just a rotating mass, right? And if you have a rotating mass, it is very easy to balance that, right? The problem is, is the reciprocating stuff. But why? What? Not why is it a problem because it's reciprocating? Why does anybody care? And the reason why is where, right? Where and destruction of parts is what matters. Now, I could go on some fucking big epilogue about nah, and just sound all clever and stuff like this. Let's fuck that off because I like to do videos like this for everybody. Okay, now how loud is that? <laughs> I need my tape. What the fucking hell has it gone? Do you know what, right? You have something for five seconds. Um, and it's a story all about sausages and buckets and hallways. Let me just... There it is. Bloody I've got loads of it. Just all in the same place. So, back to tape again. Now, I've already done a video about tape. Um, it was about Red Bull cans, Coke cans and tape. Regardless, let's just say you have... Let me find something that'll fit. Will that fit? No, it won't. Will it fuck? Ah, WD shite. That'll fit. So, we have a shaft. Uh, sorry, a bearing. This is our bearing, right? Just like the bearings in this case over here, we have a bearing. Or just like the plain bearings you can just see in the corner. That's like this. A bearing, in these cases, is a fucking hole. Or, one of these. 
right a cylinder it's just a hole and this is what we want to stick in that hole now if we have we have to have clearance and stuff but if our engine is vibrating then things are going to move both the bearing right and the shaft that's inside it they're both going to move they're going to shake with the frequency of the engine right now if there's a little space in there right then there's going to be an acceleration from basically this bearing hitting the shaft and the shaft hitting the bearing if they're both going the same way then they both go together but they don't this falls down these both are going down and what i mean by going down is the vibration right we're slowing it down to the borrower's speed right it goes like this and then what happens is is that the we go down together that's fine and then what happens is is that we go back up but one of them will go up before the other because one is heavier than the other right so let's just say the shaft is lighter than the housing so then this moves up and it clouts and then picks the whole thing up and then this happens right where we're basically doing that as a vibration even though the whole thing can move as a system relative to each other we're doing this right now imagine if our component had worn so much <laughs> <laughs> that it was like this now I can make a lot more noise because one this is lighter but number two is there's a lot more clearance so I can accelerate from there to there and hit with more vigour right? and this it's going to wear things out even more and instead of having this it'll wear down to this and it's fucked right that's what happens but there's clearance in everything there is clearance in these shafts and bearings right and even though this is an exaggerate massive exaggeration there's clearance in everything like right? everything has a this this rod moves backwards and forwards the oil is dampening a lot of the sound but the wrist pin everything's got clearances right everything has and although you might fill that with oil some things don't kind of have those clearances and even then you're then just patting the shit out of your oil and eventually you're going to squish that shit out and start banging things together right um the shock loading on fasteners and blah 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 now what in a sense what we're talking about is instead of saying that our parts wear down to a nub and nothing and do this what matters is this movement right so let's just say we go back to our initial shaft and our vibrations light like this or it's an awful lot more so this is why balance matters right think of if you've ever changed your tire on your bike and not rebalanced your wheels right as an assembly it shakes when you the faster and faster you go it starts to shake you can feel it in the handlebars and it causes fasteners to rattle loose it causes well just basically excessive wear and things eventually to break now if things think all these components are under some kind of stress you know when the piston goes bang the bearings are supporting it so the crank bends now if you've got this additional um, vibration mode going on and if those vibrations meet up with the bang which they will do they amplify right so you can get more force against things so what we want to do is instead of um instead of thinking about these things wearing out it's more the fact that these things uh the the actual force the accelerations are increased the masses were keeping the same the accelerations were increasing so this isn't happening but what i was doing is i was showing you instead of we're changing you know diameters here so we've got a lot more free play it the vibrations don't increase free play they just increase the amount of force um, that can be applied to these things because there's more energy in all these accelerations and that's what matters the reason why get I don't want that on the screen that hurts my eyes um, I use it to wash chains the reason why the um, the reason why all these vibrations matter is because they're all guitar strings right 
and sometimes you'll get a harmony you'll get a um, where they all come together and it makes a powerful sound and that's the problem all these little different vibrations because they all vibrate at different frequencies the engine's got its vibration but then because of gearing your cam chain or a mass that's out of balance in your clutch or anything you know a tooth missing in your gearbox whatever any kind of imbalance that's not perfectly rotational will cause an oscillation and when these oscillations meet up horrible things can happen things can just shake themselves to pieces and that's where it comes you know you're putting extra stress on these things so all of this secondary primary um, nodes anti-nodes harmonics oscillate all these words all the all this gubbins the whole point of why it matters in an engine is because you have this reciprocating it's not just reciprocating mass it's just imbalance everywhere but you have this imbalance somewhere and that is causing your parts to shake to death so if you can have something to counteract that so like i say if you go back to this what is it instead of having this stay still and this coming up to meet it right what we can do is this comes up and you you basically move at half speed so it's not so much of an impact what harmonics do or when things all get together and start being buddy 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 is as this starts to move up this starts to move down so you get that you know what I mean? And that's what happens when some of these frequencies um, uh, not coalesce, it's interfere, it's destructive. Oh, fucking what is it now? It's just gone. It's interference and destructive interference. So basically when they all line up and all sing the same hymn tune, you can fuck things up. But like I said, there's a lot of videos about all this balance malarkey just because it says something in a textbook that sounds pretty cool and it sounds interesting, it sounds like all technical and stuff. What they seem to miss a lot of the times is the reason behind it, right? The reason why we care is because it causes your shit to fucking break. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.